Hey, well, you can't you can't take it with a grain of salt, though, man. If you go to the up and down matches, you should be worried if you're yeah. one of those teams, no matter what. And here we go. Picks and bands. Incredible Miracle versus KT Rolster. You know, why hasn't Incredible Miracle combined their two words yet? You know, like roller and coaster, entertaining <laughs> us. Why isn't it like in incredible? Well, maybe they have. They just call it incredible. Incredible? I don't know. <laughs> Incredible. Oh, that's horrible. Incredible. See, you can't. I don't know. <laughs> I, I the one time where a Korean team won't do this, I guess. Uh, well, I'm happy with that. Well, Thresh <laughs> will be banned. Actually, by I am here, so not looking to first pick it on the blue side. Urgot taken out as well. Don't want to be dealing with that pick at all. You can avoid it. No, and the Urgot ban against Frozen, which is kind of interesting. He didn't perform well, but KT just not wanting to deal with it. And again, you know, if they ban out tanky champions, it certainly does serve their so their style. And are they going to ban out the Maokai is the question for KT. It, of course, has been a strong champion for someday to use as well, and they've dove very uh, successfully with it in the past, but whether or not it will be used in these circumstances, Questionable. I would say you offer. I, I would say you offer the Maokai to I am, make them choose because if they take it, you know you can grab Sejuani, you can grab a, a powerful top laner as well. They're going to ban the LeBlanc against Nagne. Not too shocking there. But uh, I don't know. I feel like the Sejuani for KT should be a higher priority than Maokai, right? So I say just let them have it. Sure. Uh, if I was I am, I'd just make sure that Lilac got onto Maokai no matter what. Also, this is going to be very interesting because Cassiopeia, a very high priority pick for both of these teams. Oh, yeah, that's true. Ah, Sejuani just going to be banned straight up. Interesting. Huh. I didn't uh, expect that. Yeah, I'm really surprised. Now, are they going to first pick Rek'Sai? Are they going to first pick... Oh, yes. please. Play yes. the Bard. First pick they're, Bard. We're not on 5.6 yet, so I don't think they're going to play Bard. Yeah, not. we won't be on 5.6 till next week. Yeah, as much as I love Bard, he's just Cho'Gath. not good at 5.5. There we go. Cho'Gath locked in, though. Interesting. First pick, and would you imagine that's going to the mid lane? Yes. Okay. Although, right. actually, you know what, Doa? Because Lilac's on this team, it could be a top lane choke out. Now, we really haven't yeah. seen that, but uh, of course, mid lane choke very popular in China right now. We've seen Bjergsen play it over in North America as well. And it's just a, just a very strong pick at the moment. Fits in nicely with the tank meta. He can deal a lot of damage if he can close the gap. It's always the question with him is how well, you could kite Cho'Gath out, but if you have strong engage, he's definitely going to get in there and start feasting on you. Sure enough. Nobody wants to get feasted on. Right. Sever Rek'Sai, pretty standard stuff from KT so far. Now, Arius has been playing a ton of Nunu in solo queue lately, and so it's not a big shock to see that picked up. And I guess you can right. blood boil that Kog'Ma as well. Now, this is a super late game composition from IM, and I don't know if I would be going for this strategy against KT that likes to just smash you in early. Yeah, that it does seem like it kind of leaves you a little bit vulnerable, but you know, if KT picks up a rise, would that say they're going for a little bit later of a game as well? It says to me that they want to deal with Cho'Gath in the mid lane because Cho'Gath basically can't walk up if he's constantly getting rune prisoned and Q traded with, and so I think it will be a mid lane rise. It's really quite good to deal with some of these champions, but they'll take Alistair instead. We'll see if Fixer can live up to Hachani's Legacy on Alistair, <laughs> probably his best champion, actually. Yeah, that's true, man. The roaming Alistair from uh, Hachani did a lot of damage back in the day. Looks like we might see that support Nautilus for Tucson. And, uh, of course, the Maokai, a big takeaway for KT as well, too, denying Lilac that. I think it's smart not to pick the Rise yet. Uh, you you technically don't know if that Cho'Gath is going mid. Yep. So why not just go ahead and wait Get that counter pick on the red side. What do you think about like a Scion for Lilac possibly in this case? Sure. Scion, oh, safe Nar. champion for him. Oh, okay. All right. Well, you know, even the best NAR players have struggled with uh, dealing with timing the NAR ult correctly. And I don't know if Lilac is going to be able to quite handle this. Here's the other thing. IM doesn't have primary engage. You're basically yep. relying on Frozen to hit a rupture. That's not a good way to deal with this. I'm not really sure how exactly. Now, of course, with the Sivir, and of course we see the Maokai, they're going to be counter engaging more often than engaging. But basically with this composition, it's extremely difficult to make picks. 
and you're very reliant on reacting to what your opponents are doing to you. Flash snowball, man. That's all you need. <laughs> flash absolute zero? No, no, just flash snowball. They, Make the picks. No, you, you got to clear out the vision, then flash <laughs> over a cliff as Nunu onto their team. No, just hide in a bush, because then they can't see the graphic, and you can just absolutely, absolute zero them. Could be mid cannon actually, up against this Cho'Gath. I would oh, think okay. that Rise would be a very good pickup. But they want to just go all in. So KT going to be rolling all right. with another all-in composition here. Well, that is pretty powerful if you can land a big combo with uh, Alistar. Cannon's going to be a bit of a problem. Oh, yeah. I, <laughs> yes, and uh, Maokai going in as well. Obviously, yeah. they will have Righteous Glory. They will have Sivir Ultimate, so no shortage of Engage. KT really looking to get all in and in the face of Incredible Miracle. I am, though. They need to peel. They've got some champions that are good at it. Nar is probably mostly going to be useful for scooping people out of team fights as they try and run at you. It's probably right, yeah. It's more of a disengage thing than anything, wouldn't it? Yeah, and huh. uh, I am. Now they have Cho'Gath. He's got that big 2.5 second stun. Still, or I mean, silence, still the best silence in the game. So KT has to make sure that they get their abilities off before they get in range of that or else they may be tripped up. But I don't think they're going to have too many issues. Of course, Kennen uh, tends to start ulting before he would get in range of that anyway. And someday should be Twisted advancing in. So I'm not exactly sure how useful that silence is going to be in this particular situation. Yeah, I think KT's done a good job of responding to that first pick. Cho'Gath, we'll see if it pays off. I am versus KT Rolster. A battle to stay out of the up and down matches. If KT can win it today, they'll guarantee themselves at least sixth place and force I am to join Samsung in the up and down matches after the season. Well, exciting times, KT. Pulling out exactly what we thought they would. That's right, time to get in the game. So tiny at the beginning. I am versus KT. We'll see how big that Cho'Gath gets a little bit later. I am fighting. KT fighting. The fans shouting. So I froze the beats dropping. <laughs> Drop some beats. The DJ uh, Battlecast Cho'Gath was uh, dropping the beats long before DJ Sona came along. DJing though. Just, uh, he's just annoying. You don't know he's not DJing. He could be choosing the mixes. He could be... Uh, it's true, he's a robot. I don't know what's going on inside of him. Yeah. He's just mixing it right in his own head. <laughs> that's right. popular these days, you know? Mixing it in your head? You don't actually do anything. You're just doing all the mixing in your head. I see. When you do is shows. That, is that what the kids do? You just press the space bar on the... Uh, on your Apple laptop, and then you just pump your fist for three hours. <laughs> As somebody who did DJ <laughs> digitally, though, I can tell you that is very false. <laughs> I used Ableton Live, though, which is pretty, you do a lot with it, but oh, yeah. it's definitely not, not standard DJing. It's well, look a, at you, Mr. Fancy Pants. Yeah. Ableton Live DJ. That's right. Wow. I haven't done that in years, though. Yeah. Years. Do you ever use actual turntables? Uh, no, just oh. only digital. What about digital turntables? Nope. Okay, just checking. Looks like it'll be a Gromp start for Rek'Sai. And the Ancient Krug taken by Sonstar. Gonna share the XP, I guess. Yep. Uh, yep, so we see this is becoming increasingly standard. You don't want to give away that advantage, and I think who got that fix? Sonstar got the XP. Who got the XP on the other side? It may have been Fixer, actually. I thought they just gave it to Score, actually. Oh, did they give it to Score? Yeah, All right, yeah well, you just got it. That is very generous, actually, especially with the Rek'Sai jungle. You can afford to tank that out, get yeah. your health back, and then give your lane an experience advantage, especially since this Kog'Maw is very annoying to deal with. Bio Arcane Barrage, and yeah, Much they will hit now. that level two first. Did a lot of damage with the Eye of the Storm and the range coming in from Kog'Maw. That's going to be even more annoying now. But Arrow and Hachani, or wow. Wow, I've still got that <laughs> duo on my head. Arrow and Fixer still pushing up the lane a little bit for now. 
And I think this Cho'Gath is going to be harassed pretty hard for a while here. Yeah, it's a very annoying matchup, obviously, especially since mid Cho'Gath, you will be uh, leveling your W first. And so can and can harass you pretty much outside that W range. And it doesn't have good wave clear until you get a few levels into it. Score maybe trying something up in the top lane here. Lilac, Meganar for now, but it's going to run out in a moment. Oh, jeez. Lilac has a history of being pushed too far up. Ares is coming up through the river, but Lilac may be in a bit of trouble. Might have to burn that flash. There's a nice knock up. There's a stun. Lilac already getting very low. Is he even going to be able to flash away? Ooh, barely makes it out, but there's a summoner gone for Lilac already. And Lilac there also, he was actually, he he caused Score to jump the gun. Oh. Nogne just going to E out of that one. Yeah, not too tough. No real threat from the new new gank. But in terms of that gank, actually Lilac motioning like he was going to ward the river brush caused it to go off sooner than Score would have liked. If they had been able to hit him, when that Meganar was down, it would have been a kill, and Score was trying to wait that one out, but he, ha he felt he had to go in sooner yep. because of the movement of Lilac into the river. But regardless, you still get a summoner for that. No summoners burn from KT, so they can always repeat gank up there, someday just hugging close to his turret. Yeah, well, Lilac, Lilac, of course, using that teleport to get back up and not miss any CS or minion waves. And someday, you can bet he's just going to harass Lilac as much as possible, too. There have been... I think probably more kills 1v1 against Lilac than potentially any other player in oh, Champions. I don't even think it's close. I think yeah. it's by far Lilac uh, at the top of that list. It's a sad stat. Oh, nice combo on the two. Really good. Look at that damage. Wow, very nice coordination. But Arrow and Fixer have been a very strong lane all season long. Well, ever since Fixer came in, yes. Yeah, well, all of their season long, yeah. So you get what I'm saying. Yeah, then it has fixed a lot of Arrow's CSing issues also. So this is a team that used to and just lose top and bottom lane no matter what. And it was basically scores lane triage, him running around the map like a chicken with his head cut off, trying to save his lanes as much as possible. But now his lanes have showed that they can, they're perfectly capable of taking care of themselves. They can actually get kills all on their own. And that was a big part of the KT win versus GE was their laning phase getting a lot stronger and Nagne in particular has uh, probably seen his best play. Oh, speaking of plays down here, nice knock. Tucson thrown in there, has to flash a nice knock up there as well. Will they get the first blood? It looks like they will. It's going to go over to Arrow. Will they pay for it? Sonstar on the run as well. It's a 3v2 and there's no flash. There's the flash now for Sonstar. He used that summoner heal. Thought he had flashed, hadn't quite used it yet, but that's all summoners down on both sides. Yeah, wow. everyone losing summoners right there, but KT gets in first, and they have that stronger 3v3, so the first blood is picked up by Arrow in the end. Nice gank there, coming in through the lane from score. Yep. Frozen. Starting to get annoying with that rupture, but Nagne will dance out of the way. Lilac still in level five. Interesting that in League of Legends, the only time like a, a word balloon pops up above a champion's head is the only time they actually can't say anything. Wow. Hmm. That's that's very it's deep, Della. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> what is Riot trying to what is Riot trying to impart upon us with this information? I think it's it's the futility of internet arguments, <laughs> you know, or the futility of all chat. You may think you're be sa you're saying a lot, but you're really not saying much at all. It's true. All right, Feast now available for Frozen. Of course, those Cho'Gath buffs, one of the reasons why he is able to be in this meta, considering that his cooldown refund, 50% back now, means that he can get those Feast stacks up much faster, especially if he dies. It's been a problem for a while that Cho'Gath took forever to max out his Feast stacks again, but mm -hmm. time has been shaved off pretty considerably. They needed to, Riot had a, you know, he was doing not too well, so Riot had to bail him out. Some say he was too big to fail. He was. <laughs> well, actually, he was too big and failing. <laughs> yep, that, that also works too, actually. Well, maybe some action in the mid lane. Doesn't look like it's gonna pan out though, no. Score back in lane. Going through that ward in Lilac. Gonna just ult someday against the wall there, but someday not too phased for, by it. Yeah, someday, still not really 
way ahead on CS though already. Yeah, and he's got a lot of money to spend at the moment. Yes, he does. Lilac going for that Hex Drinker, of course. Looks like they're going to have the blue over to Nagne. There it is. Going for the double Doran's Blade. That's just a lane harass cannon build, obviously. Oh, yeah. Well, the nice thing about this cannon as well is that he's got so much sustain since he's not mana based, too, you know? Yeah, I mean, a little bit less than Cho'Gath, especially Frozen now with the Negatron Cloak. Cho'Gath's passive at a certain point gets super annoying to deal with because you really can't. Harassing him becomes meaningless at about this stage in the game just because he gets so tanky and he has so much mana and health back from his passive. Uh, it's going to start to taper off right here. We'll see what Nagne wants to go in terms of itemization. Looks like he will be going for an Abyssal first. Yeah, looks that way. One big AP threat on IM. It'll help him a little bit. Uh, eh, yeah, it'll help him. It'll actually help him quite a bit. I take it back, Doa. Okay. Shauna Kogma <laughs> having that MR quite useful. I'm glad we worked through that. It was, a, it was a time of crisis, but yep. we made it. That's right. I feel, I feel stronger now. Particularly. Yeah, score is going to be going for the Bami Cinder and the Cinder Hulk enchantment. We've seen some Rek'Sai's choose not to get that item, but I don't really see a reason why you shouldn't get it even on a champion like Rek'Sai, who does tend to benefit from some early damage. I think with this tank meta in the late game, you just have to have it. That, that was one of the factors I believe that held up Jin Air in their match against SKT was Chaser's decision to go for the Warrior Enchant over Cinder Hulk. Man, it's just, I, I'm just not used to seeing Arrow ahead in CS. That's, <laughs> that's a new one, you know? And that does not happen very often. And with First Blood as well. Well, we're yeah. kind of used to seeing him for, with First Blood from the KT Arrows. If there was one the thing they did blood well isn't was surprising. Yeah, skirmish in the early game. Yeah. KT finally trying to figure out that identity again, even though most of those Arrows players, most of those Arrow players have gone. Now that Hachani is no longer here, it's only two-fifths Arrows. Arrows, oh, a lot of damage on the two send. Ignite ticking away, but it's not going to be quiet enough, it looks like. Close call. Try to get him with the ult from Arrow as well. Oh, meanwhile, the gank in the mid lane, there's Chilling Smite down onto Frozen, and there's a nice ult from Ken and Frozen. Already pretty tanky, nice rupture, but is it enough? Nagne with one more auto, gets it score, picks up that kill. Oh, Ares, there's a flash <laughs> out for you. See what I tell you? Great Nunu engage there, right? <laughs> the flash snowball ultimate actually yeah. cleaning up Nagne right there. Uh, a little bit, perhaps a little bit of an overbold engage, but the, especially since the kills both went onto the junglers. In that not situation, so not much gained by KT Rolster. And again, a lot of summoners burned right there. So it was one more summoner from Incredible Miracle. So they've got that advantage. Someday rushing the righteous glory in this game. So looking for that heavy engage, that is not a surprise, but they have to. It's all dependent on KT's mid game right here because come late, they're not going to be doing much at all to Incredible Miracle's lineup. And Janna should be able to peel sufficiently for this cog. Oh, Tucson in a little bit of trouble. They had to use a summer heal again to take uh, to uh, keep him alive. He sounded like one of Marge Simpson's sisters for a second there. <laughs> yeah, got a little bit of cold right now. We just got a preview of Monty's casting in like 30 years. <laughs> we could look forward to that. I hope I sound uh, I hope I sound raspy at that time. He really is a strong body. <laughs> You'll be a great mob boss, too, at that point. Great. I look forward to it. You and Makuza just <laughs> fighting over turf here in Seoul. <laughs> oh, they're going to clear up some words here in bot lane to give Fixer and Arrow a little bit more safety, it looks like. I know I'll be ha happy if I can sound like Tom Waits when I cast. Hey, that's not so bad. <laughs> this would be great. See, I'll just be the muscle in this syndicate, obviously. <laughs> Yeah, we, we, we talk about you. The muscle really comes to mind. Just hey, man, Chuck Norris has those commercials where he's like, I'm 50-something, and I'm in the best shape of my life. I'm like, you know what, Chuck? I'll be in the best shape of <laughs> my life when I'm 50-something, too. That's that's very inspiring. Thank you. <laughs> well, the bar's been set pretty low, so. <laughs> what are you talking about? Chuck Norris is in great shape. No, I was talking about you. Oh, well, <laughs> that's true. That's true. That. If Chuck Norris says it, it actually has meaning. Oh, it's going to be a uh, dragon for IM. Very nice. Oh, three-man knockup from Pipser. Can oh, they chase him? There's a big ult. 
Nice ult from Tucson to keep Nagane away. Was it enough though? Score coming in all over Frozen. A kill for someday. The top laner picking one up, and there is a double for Arrow. Oh boy, and they're not done quite yet. Star Star flashing nuts. over the wall. Yeah, Fixer really making some nice plays, channeling his inner Hachani. <laughs> Uh, Lila coming in with a TP, but not able to do anything without the Mega Nar for him. Meanwhile, Someday finds that flank and uh, nails down two cents. So right after this dragon goes down, the teleport wow, what start. A what a really good play from Fixer. I am grouping up and then chaining Ooh, the man. CC brutally right uh, there. And Ares just can't do enough with the absolute zero. Someday uh, choosing the correct path to go on the flank right there because they have everyone already locked up yeah. right next to the pit. So series of kills rolling in for KT. Now score going on the invade. I don't know. Oh. oh, he got it. No, no he Harry's didn't get got it. it with smite. Uh, I thought that score was going to be able to smite it, but he didn't have it up. Yeah, didn't have it up, so wasn't yep. able to secure. But nice, nice attempt right there. Now they lose the dragon, but find themselves with a very healthy gold lead. Uh, Lilac didn't uh, do a whole lot in that team fight either. He kind of just ran around in the dragon pit being like, ah, oh, good luck, guys. <laughs> See ya. Hop over the wall. That was really well played by KT. I love yeah. the fact that Someday uh, didn't focus on the Nunu, who is absolute zero. They already knew they had them boxed in. Instead, going after Tucson's Janna. Well, they basically traded that dragon for like another couple thousand gold to their lead there. Yeah. That was, that's a, that's a good trade. Yeah, getting the bottom yeah. tower as well. And this is yeah. great for KT. KT doesn't need early dragons. Not That's not how they play the game. It's much better for them as a team with their style to go ahead and get early kills, get early towers, and try and snowball off of the gold lead as opposed to playing for a lot of yeah. uh, kind of pressure dragons at three and four because KT wants to have an overwhelming edge by the time that those plays take place. Yeah, pressure dragon was the name of my industrial electronic <laughs> group in uh, college. <laughs> we were pretty hardcore. Very like Nine Inch Nails, Skinny Puppy influence, you know. <laughs> A little bit of, a little bit of craft work thrown in. Yeah, a little bit, sure. So, you know, there's not a lot of vision right now for Lilac in the top lane, and this is usually the situation where Lilac starts to get camped pretty hard. We'll see if KT decides to do it. It's worked well for everybody else this season. Yeah. Score, riding that 100% kill contribution yet again. Yeah, of course. He's been, he's been great this game so far. Well, we saw him, you know, like we mentioned, chain that CC so well in that dragon fight, too. A little bit of a mistake in CC chaining when they tried to gank Frozen in the mid lane, but yeah, that, that made up for that it. That particular fight, yes, definitely made up for oh. it. A little bit of headbutt oh. for Rise. That was a great ward defense right there from KT. Fixer has been so on point with his Alistair combos this game, and I am is grouping up for it. They're kind of asking for it in a way, but yeah. This is, a, this is a really positive thing to see from Fixer as well, too. You know, for a long time, he was just a Thresh player. Now, he really seems to be expanding that champion pool and doing well. Yeah, my question is for, for Fixer, can he play things that aren't engaged supports? You know, that his Leona picked up a win on that. He's one and two, and, but he's 0 and three on Janna so far. And that he played Janna very early on with this team uh, before they got rolling a bit. Yeah. But since then, it's all been Thresh, Annie, and now Alistair. Yeah, you wonder how much is him, how much is the team. Time will tell. But obviously, disengaged supports really not what KT is looking for at this phase in their existence. I don't think disengage is in the KT playbook, <laughs> man. Not right now, at the very least. When we've seen them, they have won with Jugger Ma, but it, it was a pretty sad win. <laughs> yeah. Not the, not the cleanest Juggernaut win we've seen. Also, it was against Samsung. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sadly, Samsung has been kind of a kind of a face role for everybody except for I am. The second half of the season and the first half. Really, the whole season, one yeah. might say. The whole half. <laughs> the whole two halves. Yep. Hundred percent of both halves. So 200% of the season. <laughs> Doe the math. Doe math. Right it strikes there. again. 400% if you include summer. Looking into the future. Well, I am still has a comp that's very viable in the late game. They can probably do okay if they don't fall any further behind, but 
This is pretty much the limit for them right now. KT playing back and see what I am has in store for this next dragon. Yeah. Well, Lilac really not very tanky yet. He's gonna have some problems surviving this IE Sivir this early on. Wave already pressing towards the tier two turret of Incredible Miracle. So they will have a, a nice advantage heading into this Dragon Vision contest that's coming up. Meanwhile, everyone on KT, good recall timing. We already see Kennen go back and pick up that needlessly large rod. That'll be a nice damage boost for the next team fight. Yeah. And Brutalizer as I well. I was just about to say, yeah, Arrow with the Brutalizer. Not something we've seen a whole lot, but do you think he's going into Black Cleaver with that? No, he's going into Ghostblade. Oh, okay. Yeah, going into Ghostblade. And well, uh, I would prefer Black Cleaver myself. <laughs> I think Ghostblade's a great item on Sivir, especially if you really want to push in the mid game very hard. Well, that's that's a lot of speed. Uh, Lilac duking it out with someday, not making it anymore. Meanwhile, a big fight down in the bot lane. There's the engage. Nice. Oh. Whoa, that chaining knockup in a flash from Nogne to catch Ares. That is a Fixer couple easy has been kills. So good this, this is, game. This is an MVP performance from Fixer's uh, Isla start this game. Yeah. No question about and it. And the synergy with score yeah. has also been excellent. Well, easy dragon for KT now. Yeah, score still at that 100% kill contribution. He's been working really well on these engages with so Fixer. Fixer, yeah. And they didn't expect them to come in that fast. Tusa didn't even have time to use Monsoon. Incredible Miracle Steal. Nope. <laughs> no luck for Sonstar. Frozen is getting uh, a bit bigger on this Cho'Gath. But let's watch this again. Just another, so another just amazing decide, They play. decide to engage yep. using that ultimate. And look at that. No time to use Monsoon. Boomerang Blade right there to decapitate Janna. Wow. That's, that's right. That's Got to make it as violent as possible, though. I guess so. To eviscerate Janna. We can get even more descriptive about that. That's right. Her entrails strewn <laughs> about the jungle, <laughs> hanging from trees. That's right. There for the, the wolves to feast on. That's, that's right. Gore dripping from their jaws. Fiddlesticks crows <laughs> ate well that night. Cool, we can sound like a Game of Thrones book. I guess so. <laughs> well, it wasn't quite as unexpected. You know, we kind of thought that Jana was going to get blown up there, but it was almost as sudden as a Game of Thrones death. Score and Fixer on a mission again, Arrow. Yeah, that's right. Up. The mission this time, though, Boy. is not one of violence. It is one of protection for the turret. Yeah. One of protection. <laughs> Kings in the north. Well, that's certainly not king Lilac's title king in the this top. season. No. <laughs> no I, miss, I miss Stark, the king in the top. Lilac's definitely the Theon Greyjoy of, of uh, OGN <laughs> champions. He's basically kind of like not very effective and then just gets tortured the entire season. That's, yeah, basically, that's, that's about it. That's, I think that's yeah. a good analogy. Yeah. I see a lot of similarities. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I. I suppose uh, does that that makes uh, Duke the bastard of Dreadfort then, That's, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much as a primary torture of Lilac. <laughs> also uh, known for flaying his opponents mercilessly. Yeah. Right, wow, I can draw a lot of parallels there. <laughs> huh. What do you know? Rejected by his, you know. his rightful KT heritage. Wow, that <laughs> it really does work, doesn't it? Yeah. Yep, he spent <laughs> spent far too long with Najin now, even though they've taken care of him. Oh wait, no, I messed that one up. You get the idea. You're right. Well, this is a pretty massive lead for KT now. Even yeah, it is. With I am. I'm afraid that the damage is just going to be overwhelming. Yes, they have a very tanky composition, but when you're behind a couple of core items. Also, Incredible Miracle doesn't have any armor yet, and Arrow has Ghostblade and Infinity Edge. So not really sure who's going to be able to stop him from absolutely murdering everybody with Ricochet. Yeah. I am looking like it's gonna be pretty tough for them to win anything at this point. Really, they should just send uh, Kennen into a side lane right now and have Sivir push down mid. Frozen has zero armor, which means that 
Sivir really going to be able to bully this Cho'Gath even from range. And Kennen should be perfectly safe in a side lane. That's a good point. So why do you see a Sivir top? I don't really know. Yeah, we've seen Nagne do plenty of split pushing over his career as well too. So it's not like it's a new thing for him. Yeah, definitely the best strategy for KT to go with oh, right Lilac now. Lilac in a little bit of trouble. Has to burn that flash. Nice flash knockup. And here comes Someday on top of him as well. Nice Arcane Smash pushing him back a little bit. Tucson coming in, but Fixer is there to help. Oh, oh good ult nice for Tucson. Monsoon. No kidding. Great patience on that to wait till yeah. the headbutt was in progress. Not sure it was really worth burning the flash right there from Score with the tank build onto Rek'Sai. I think that gank was not really likely to work. Nope. No, 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 no. No, no. <laughs> Stop walking into the top side, Arrow. You don't need to be there. He can't He can't hear you, man. <laughs> He's in the booth. We're, we're outside casting on the desk. <sighs> Sometimes oh. I wish they could hear me, though. I know. I just want to I help. I know, Mont. I just want to help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, the thing is, though, is that they have to learn this stuff for themselves. You know? You gank for a laner, and he'll get a kill, but you teach a laner to gank, <laughs> and he'll get kills for his whole career. You shot call for KT, yep. and they win for one game, but you, KT teaches themselves to shot call, and then they can shot call for a lifetime, yeah. maybe. You give them a copy of your notebook, maybe? <laughs> your shot calling notebook? Yeah, Arrow's been just running around the map not doing much right now because there was a freeze going on in the top side. Now he joins in mid lane to start pushing. They have control over that red buff. Score will pick it up. Yeah, KT's got quite a bit of map control right now. And IM hasn't really been able to get that much vision yeah, Choke throughout has, this game. Choke's wave clear is quite good. So I think that KT trying to push the wave and then play into the bottom side is a nice call because you're really looking for those picks with how much engage you have at this point in time and to fight around this dragon. So maintaining control of that bottom side, absolutely crucial. Well, this is a really common occurrence for KT. You know, you get to that point in the game where they've got a big lead, but then they just don't have a lot of siege. And they've done a good job of waiting for the opportunities to sort of win team fights and then take an objective or two. So this yeah. is par for the course for KT right now. Yeah, they may get another one as well, depending on if I am wants to fight this dragon, which they should not do, probably. They should wait to scale right now because that's their only hope in this game yeah. is getting Kogma rolling and then their massive line of tanks up in front. Okay, Lilac's building Ma. He's been tainted by Marin. <laughs> the Ma of Marin Mortius. It someday has the Frozen Heart already, so I don't think the Harass is going to be that good, although he does manage to take down a turret with it eventually, score all on his lonesome. Okay, he's going to grab that dragon. And that was the first turret for IM as well, so I don't think that KT is terribly worried about this. Oh, but IM going for a Baron right now. Very I sneaky. see it happening. I think. Can they? Oh, yeah, yep. they do have that one word there. You're right. They could, they could see Janna autoing the Baron, so yeah, that was really no off. surprise at all. That's a desperation. Baron right there. Oh Arrow going to pop his Ghost Blade and smash this turret. Yep, he knows that nobody's around to uh, engage on him right now. IM's going to try to push up mid lane while the AD carry's not around, though. Will they be able to trade a Tier 1 for a Tier 2 at least? No, not even that. Wow. IM just cannot catch a break. Uh oh, and uh, Super's coming from behind. Oh, could have. Not exactly the champion you want to flank with. But. Well, they were they really shouldn't have tried to fight that second dragon. If they hadn't lost a lot of people around the dragon, I think you get to that point where I am really outscales. They played too hard for the early dragons in this game, and it's cost them that big gold lead that KT is very capable of taking advantage of. Yeah, they've got 7k right now. About no, that's yeah, no, it's about 7k. And that makes it tough for I am to really do much. Pretty much everybody a full item ahead across the board. Mid lane not as much, but everywhere else is looking pretty good for KT. You know, the mob build isn't bad if you're ahead and you want to split push because we saw how hard Marin could punish with that item uh, right. against an AP champion. But when you're behind like this, you have to get tanky to team fight your way to a victory. Oh, Fixer taking a lot of damage from Lilac, getting a little bit too close there. Because if you go Maw here, 
and Lilac is off in another lane, you're just going to get dove. And yes, he has teleport, but your team's going to die so quickly that it may, it just may not matter. There you go, another tower down for KT Rollster. Four turrets to one. And I am just seemingly unable to stop this, despite the fact that there's really not much siege at all from KT. They're just too strong. Like, if they stick by the turret, they'll just get dope. Yeah, they're just, then they're not tanky enough yet. Yep. Still, no armor. <laughs> Garrow's really getting quite scary. I mean, that's the thing, yeah. No armor for Lilac, no armor for Frozen. If it comes to a big team fight, unless they blow up Arrow immediately, they're just going to get destroyed. And Nagne still has two Doran's Blades, so he's got some AD as well. <laughs> a very small <laughs> amount, yes. And the Boy Staff now yeah. critically coming in. Oh, that'll be big for those It's a huge, huge yeah. item to pick up at this point in time. Lilac finally gets the Warden's Mail alongside the Maw and continues to farm out the top side, but KT perfectly capable of putting a lot of Baron pressure down right now, and they want to try and catch Incredible Miracle in one of these chokes if they can. I am just trying desperately to maintain a little bit of vision at least. I can't see the Baron right now. Yep. They have to be very concerned about that. Award someday just continuing to slowly push in that bottom side. Really distortion enchantment actually for someday. That's interesting. He's going for distortion this game instead of the home guard because he has righteous glory. Yeah, he's got that speed to engage with. He just needs a faster and Sivir teleport. Ult. Yeah. yeah. I think that's a very good adaptation when you have Sivir and a Righteous Glory Maokai on the same team. Makes a lot of sense. And so I am. Oh, turning around. They may have caught score here. Score goes back over to Fixer. Fixer looking to zone. It's about half health. There's absolute zero. Nice knockup for Fixer. Can KT follow up on this? I am forced to flash away over the wall. A couple summoners used on both sides. Oh, Someday teleported in. Tucson with not the greatest assault we've ever seen. But I don't know if KT can quite engage on this. Maybe they can. Oh, Sansar getting a little bit too far up. Oh, the Lannisters send their regards. And here comes Nogne underneath the turret. He gets exhausted, but pops that zone. Yes. And this is the engage. you got to stay away from the turrets. KT will just dive you, and they will win. That's three more kills and for KT Rolster. And since Lilac canceled his TP right there, KT knew they could continue. Poor positioning from Tuzin, poor oh. positioning from Sonstar. The fight's continuing, but well, they can't Lilac really do not. much. Basically, yeah. I am as smart to keep chunking out KT so they can't take a Baron off of this. Well, they still want At to. At the very least, oh. they're going to go back in, maybe. Yeah, Ares may have gone a little bit too far. Wow, again, chaining that CC. KT, they baited him into that one. Pretty hard. It's time for Baron. Yep. Score coming back with that Void Rush. And no vision at all for IM. They know what's going on, but no chance to engage really on this. Really slow Baron, though. Yeah. Considering they have a Ken in the mid lane. Yeah, all the lanes are pushing, though. They don't need to worry about losing any objectives. And that'll be a good time. So let's check this out again. So it looks like they may have caught somebody out right here, but quick trigger onto the Rek'Sai tunnel TP. But by the time Lilac, he can't engage right there because they were all swarming around. He chose the wrong place to TP, basically. And right after that cancel, KT knows they can go back in. Sonstar gets really greedy with his positioning right here that causes the Twisted Advance to take him out alongside uh, Scores Unburrow and Nagne with just a great ult in Zonia's right under the turret. Helps them grab a couple more kills, and now they're going to get the next dragon. They already have that Baron, and that speed boost is very helpful for KT's uh, team composition on Dragon 3. Oh, yeah. And what good timing, too. Everyone recalls after Baron. They get back with about 10 seconds to spare. Everything just kind of working for KT this game. Now 11,000 gold ahead. Fixer's very impressive. You know, this is, uh, I believe this is our longest game this week, actually. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah, believe it or not. It is our longest game so far this week, and we've already had two best of threes, so that's saying quite a lot. Our games have literally averaged like 25-30 yep. this week. Yep. It's been a bit one-sided, and even though this one's a bit one-sided as well, too, it's not quite as much of a stomp as we've seen on Wednesday and Friday. Uh, I don't know about that, Doha. This is well, a it's a stomp, but it's not ended. It's not done. <laughs> so not therefore, done. the fact that this game is still going <laughs> means it's not as much of a stomp. You have to be a little bit, bit tankier, though, to dive turrets in the way we're seeing. Frozen is well, they're making it work. pretty big right now. 
And they're getting very tanky indeed, and they're using this Baron well, taking out another tier two turret. And there's the final tier two up in the top side. Lilac will have his Meganar. Whoa, Lilac with a flash ultimate, but where's the follow up? Getting some stuns on Nanagne there. Oh, someday coming back in. Sunstar getting way too far ahead again. Very unforgiving on that Kog'Maw. Look at the ult again from Nagne. Jeez, double kill even for Fixer. Getting a little bit bloodthirsty there, and this one is over, guys. That's going to be an inhibitor taken to the top lane, and KD, they could probably just walk up. Yeah, I yeah. think Someday can just tank the turrets a only, little bit. Only one person left alive, Ooh, so... Someday! Oh, he died. Well, Frozen's back. Can he stop this? I don't think so. No, there's going to spell turn right shield on the, the rupture, so he can just keep auto attacking right there. Sonstar's yep. Kogma positioning very questionable this game. That's a 33-minute game. KT, one kill onto Incredible Miracle, one tower and one dragon. That's all they got. KT dominating this one, start to finish. What a great game from Fixer. Wow. Fixer and Score so good together. No kidding. On Fixer, those engages, Fixer and Score are like the better version of what Tucson and Wisdom were. You know. Yeah, it's, it's impressive to see. They've got similar synergy. It, it kind of makes you wonder if I am would be a similar team if, if Wisdom had still been around. Yeah. Not as good, but maybe to a lesser degree. We'll never know now, Doa. No. Nope. It is a thing of the past. Yep. It is just a part of our dreams now. A victory for KT Rolster.